Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the, and welcome back to the shell scripting series of course. And in this video we're going to be looking at tests and how to perform them. Now, before we actually get started with creating our scripts, uh, let me explain what tests are designed or created for. Well, simply put, tests are used for automating processes and tasks. But you might be asking yourself something. Well, other scripts do this without performing tests. That if you know that's if you know what they they do and what they are. But what's the difference? Well, uh, the tests are designed to automate tasks that require conditional data. Let me explain. Let's uh, let's say I wanted to create a script that will uh, will will essentially wait for a file to be downloaded, uh, and then after it's been downloaded, I want my computer to shut down itself. All right. So what I can do is using a shell script and using tests uh, and also using conditional statements. I can create a script that will check my downloads directory for a file, okay? And obviously, I specify the file name. So uh, I will loop that shell script, and uh, it will continuously check, probably every um, every thirty seconds, and uh, until the, the directory is found or the directory is download or the file is downloaded. And once it is downloaded, uh, the the test will return a positive value, and that will execute execute the rest of the script. Will that will essentially then uh, execute the the shutdown commands and shut down my computer once the uh, once the file has been downloaded. This was a simple script that I created, and we'll be looking at it in the next video. But of course, this is something that may not apply to you, and you you might want to experiment for yourself. Okay, so in this video, I'll be covering some of the basic ones that essentially explain the principle, and the rest is up to you. As I mentioned, we'll be creating advanced scripts, but again, it's all up to you and your experimentation to furthermore understand it. So I've created my test uh, shell uh, file right here, and I've I've given it the uh, the execute permissions. I've already given it permissions so that I can execute it, and we're ready to go. I've selected the interpreter we're going to be using, and we are ready to go. All right. So the syntax for a test is very simple, and as I mentioned, they work in relation or uh, they work in correlation with the conditional statements. What do I mean by this? You see, because a test runs under certain circumstances, for example, we can run a test to check if a file exists, which we'll do right now. If it exists, we need the script to perform something; otherwise, it's useless. If it doesn't exist, we also need it to display or to 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 perform a certain task. Now, as I mentioned in the script that I created for downloading a file, if the the file was not downloaded yet, keep the system running. That was essentially what the script was doing. Once it's done, shut it down for me. All right. So we can get started. Let me, and let me explain the syntax really simply. So. For example, we can use the if conditional statement. Now, in here is where I would put in my condition or my test. Now, the the most exciting of tests I'll explain in a second. So, how do we do this? So, uh, if I just exit out, let me just save this the way it is and exit out, and let me just clear this up and I type in uh, a very very simple operator here. We we essentially bring up the help uh, the help menu here. So we say help. And we say test, so we're we're opening the the documentation for the test command. Now, you can see that uh, the test is used to evaluate a conditional expression, and uh, we'll exit exit with a status of true or false, uh, true being zero and one being false, depending on the evaluation. So you can use this in relation or in correlation with conditional statements to display or to perform tasks or execute processes. Uh, in regards to what uh, what output is uh, is gotten, so for example, zero or one, zero being true, one being false. Now the the most exciting, as I mentioned, is testing files, testing directories, checking if the uh, there we are, that's the one directories files, checking if a file exists, uh, if a file doesn't exist, uh, checking if different directories exist, checking if the file is readable, checking if the file is executable, uh, and so on and so forth. All right. You can then also uh, compare files, which we'll not be looking at because that's really not something that I want to cover. It's not really important. And what we looked at when we were performing uh, the uh, when we when we were looking at the if uh, and the if else statements, we were essentially comparing variables. And as you can see right here, you can uh, also compare strings uh, whether you know one is greater than the other one, depending on um, on their lexicographic uh, on their lexic the lexic uh, the lexicography 
sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrongly. It's really a complicated word. Th that essentially means how long they are, or you can specify whether they have more uppercase letters or lowercase letters. Okay, so let me just clear that up and we can finally get started. And let me just open up the test. There we are. Fantastic. All right, so this is really very simple to get started with. And I said you can use it with any conditional statement. So let's say I wanted to test if the the word list directory exists. OK, so let's say I wanted to test on this Kali installation whether my word list directory exists. Now, I know that it does exist and you'll get you'll understand what I'm saying right now. So I'm going to say if uh, and in here we specify the uh, the command, which uh, you, you can you can check by looking at the documentation by typing in help test and that will essentially bring up all the operators. So I'm checking for a directory. All right. So to do that, I use the D command. Sorry, make sure to leave a space. So the D, uh, the D command or the D option. And then I specify the directory that I'm, I, I'm, uh, that I want to specify. So, uh, the, the directory for the word list is user share word lists. All right. So I want, I want this script to check or to test if this directory exists. If it does, if it does, I want it to, to print out the following. I want it to print out, uh, yes, it, it exists. All right. And that is probably what it's going to print out because that directory does exist. Now I have for the purpose of this video deleted the rock you, um, the rock you word list and I'll be testing for the file itself. So give me a second. So I can then end the script here or I can say else as we looked at in the previous video and we say echo. Uh, sorry about that. We can say echo and we can say the file does not exist. All right. And we, we hit enter and we can finally end the if statement and say fi control o and we can exit and launch this script. So let me just do that right now. I don't think I, I launched it previously, but anyway, test dot shell and I hit enter. And as you can see, it prints out. It prints out. Yes, it exists. This is what I was talking about when the different enumeration scripts out there, they're essentially testing all these files and displaying back. And they also read from some of these files. Uh, but in this case, this was a directory. All right. So it was checking uh, whether a certain directory existed. Now let's test again to, to see if the rock you word list exists. So, uh, instead of a directory, we are checking for a file. So that uh, to do that, we use the E. All right. So we're checking for a file. So inside the word list folder, I want you to check if we have a rocku.txt. Uh, if we have a rocku.txt file uh, in here. And again, if it does exist, print out it exists. If it doesn't, I want you to tell me that as well. I'm going to hit Control O and uh, I'm going to exit and we can launch this script. And as you can see, the file does not exist and uh, I have deleted it. So if you want, uh, I, I really don't need to prove that that, but it should have uh, shown up if it did, because I specified the the name as I did right here, rocky.txt. Um, and that is how to check for uh, how to test for different directories and files. Now, uh, one of the most exciting ones, which is quite important for you to know. And again, this is all about automating it. Um, is if we can check for the uh, the Etsy shadow file, which con uh, contains the hashed uh, passwords for all the users. So I can say uh, user, sorry, that is in the Etsy folder and that uh, belongs in the shadow uh, right here, Etsy shadow. So essentially now when we'll be looking at creating our own scripts, what I'll do is I'll make a script in the next video uh, and I'll show you how to make it that will test this Etsy uh, that that will test for this Etsy shadow file. If it exists, it's going to display and will hopefully output the hashes into a TXT document. Now, of course, when we make it more advanced, we can make one that unhashes them depending on their uh, on their hashing algorithm. OK, so I want to uh, this script will test if the shadow file exists. I'm going to exit and I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it exists very well. So essentially, that's what I wanted to cover right now. Now, of course, there are many other commands that you can specify. For example, you can specify if a certain file exists. Uh, and if it's a regular file that, to, to specify that you can use the F command uh, to check if a file is readable by you, be you being a different user. In my case, that would not make any sense. Because as you can see right here, I'm, I'm in the root. Uh, I'm, I'm the root user. So 
That means uh, I can access any file in the system. But if I had a different user account, you can run this script to check whether that file is executable by you. And this comes down to privilege escalation. If you've ever performed it, you know that the most important thing is finding out what files you can access. And this is a perfect example of how to start and create your own scripts for this. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. If you found value in it or you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section on my social networks on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.